I had the craziest dream the other night, they said, and then proceeded to bore the shit out of you for 15 minutes. You know how interesting my thoughts usually are? Well, well, wait until you hear them half remembered and unburdened by the filtration of logic. It's the least promising opening to a conversation since would you like to have someone here with you before we go over the results? And if they want to make it doubly unpleasant for their listener, they'll wrap it up by asking what you think it all means. What do you think it means? That you dreamt about it or that you thought I'd give a fuck? I mean, healthy reticular formation activity. That you were asleep. What the fuck kind of cerebral light do you expect me to shed on the unicorn in a fucking supermarket? But of course, most frustrating thing about this whole ordeal is that I will freely admit at one time... I was one of those ridiculous jackasses desperately searching for the secret decoder ring for my dreams. I own multiple books on dream interpretation, and when I had a particularly vivid dream, I'd, I'd write down everything I could remember and then comb through the books and hope to unlock whatever important message the omniconscious collective mind was trying to send me. God, I wish I could slap the stupid out of my younger self. Now, Eventually, it occurred to me that the collective mind was a fucking idiot if its best idea for how to communicate with me was through some ambiguous, unconscious, nebulous rebus puzzle. But it took an embarrassingly long time. In fact, somehow there were steps in that process. I first rejected those books that offered up these one-to-one -one correlations, right? The dream dictionaries where, you know, you'd look up whatever noun or verb you were dreaming about and it would tell you what that was a symbol of. But I guess the, the idea that a white cat meant the same thing in my dream as everyone else's dream seems sillier than the idea that a white cat in my dream meant anything at all. So I rejected those ones early. Of course, upon reflection, I, the real reason I rejected them first is because they offered specificity, right? It's like that with all the hippie Wicca neo-pagan pseudoscience bullshit. Anything that offers up concrete predictions or lend itself to direct testing had to get rejected pretty fucking quick. It's it's like all other means of knowing that aren't science in that way. But my justification at the time for why my dreams kept failing to impart great wisdom on me was that I was trying to dissect them with too blunt a tool. So I went back to the bullshit store for better bullshit books and I dug up all the Jungian nonsense and I, I kept these elaborate dream journals, which were at least somewhat redacted in case my wife decided to read them. And whenever I woke up with a particularly vivid memory or whatever, I'd obsess over it all day like a half-remembered appointment. It's part of my life that I'd basically forgotten about until a couple of days ago when I woke up remembering a, a chunk of my dream where I let a black cat into my house. Now, I know I just told you about my dream, so according to my own standards, this is now a boring diatribe, and according to Eli's, I have to fuck you. But the point is, that's exactly the kind of thing that would have had me pouring over the dream journal 20 years ago. You know, it's just chock full of paper-thin, uninspired horror movie director symbolism, isn't it? Black cat in the house. I, I, I told my wife about it the, in the morning, and we laughed about how meaningful that would have been to young stupid me. And then I started getting pissed off at young stupid me, as I so often do. I mean, there I was, prime learning age shit, and what I chose to learn was less than nothing. The, the, the time would have been better spent playing video games and keeping abreast with cultural references I would need in my 40s. Instead, I obsessed over 18 kinds of stupid. And the most fucked up thing is that in this case, I even had an interesting question to start with, right? Why did I dream about letting a black cat into my house is a really interesting question if you tackle it from a scientific perspective. I mean, the cat in the house don't factor into it much, but the why did I dream part of the question is a boundless well of fascinating. There are a ton of intriguing unanswered questions around sleep science. You know, and we're not even 100% sure why we sleep. Why do we dream? Why do we yawn? Why do some people walk in their sleep? All kinds of awesome science that the very same question could have led me to, but instead I pissed away my time trying to reach the end of a mystical jogging track. See, we have a problem in the atheist movement, and, and I say we to make you complicit in my failing, where we tend to think of this stuff as the purview of the stupid. You know, I, I'm as guilty as anyone of dismissing claims of mysticism and religious experiences, the rantings of idiots, even though I myself was once one of those idiots. If, if podcasting had existed when I was 25, I'd still be apologizing for the show I did on how to teach yoga to your fish. I mean, we all know plenty of smart people who are devoutly religious or horribly mired in woo, right? I, and, and if you don't, I mean, many of the most admired intellects in our movement spent plenty of their cognizant adult years buried under that bullshit. And let's be honest, what would it say about us if we were locked in a decades-long battle against a bunch of idiots and hadn't made much progress.
And yet, from where we stand now, it seems like you'd have to be a Velcro-only level idiot to fall for the claims of homeopathy or Christianity or dream interpretation, even for those of us who once fell for it. And I'll admit that it is a challenge for me to keep in mind that the idiot I'm railing against as often as not is me. And the fact that it's so hard is the reason it's so important.